May started off pretty slow, but these last couple of weeks did a lot of heavy lifting. So let's take a look at some of the updates and new features. A new open source compiler starting with React 19 was announced and its role is to basically just optimize your application. Think of it as never having to write another use memo or use callback again, since all these will be handled by the compiler. Vercel's ship happened this month where they announced all sorts of things, but here's the most exciting stuff. A new version of the AI SDK was released with support for new models and new utils. Support for feature flags was also announced so if you're using tools like launch darkly this is all now integrated within Vercel. They're introducing Vercel firewall to give you some control over your app's protection which they say will be free on all plans. Next.js 15 RC is out which will most likely go live once React 19 does. This is coming with support for the React compiler, improvements to error messages and hydration messages, some much anticipated caching overhauls where things like fetch and route handlers are no longer cached by default, partial pre-rendering, an API to execute code after a response is finished streaming and a new design for a create next app along with being able to enable turbo pack from when running the command. OpenAI released a new model called GPT 4.0 which can reason across audio, vision and text in real time. This model is both cheaper and faster but there was also plenty of drama that came with this release as well which I won't go into. Google I.O. also happened this month where they announced Gemini 1.5 flash, AI overviews when using search which also has been making some very interesting suggestions like adding glue to your pasta sauce. There's also ask photos to search through your photos and a lot more. Drizzle ORM came out with some really nice updates as well. Now offering support for Cloudflare D1 with Drizzle Kit, Drizzle Studio, and a Chrome extension. I plan on making a video on this soon, so watch out for that. Another thing in this update was support for PG Vector, updated Postgres indexes API, and Drizzle Kit supporting all fields from Postgres indexes. You can also access Drizzle Studio in your Neon console for your database, which is nice. React Router and Remix are merging. So what you know of Remix Remix and what was supposed to be its v3 is now going to be released as React Router v7. Long story short here is they realized Remix was just a wrapper so by merging its existing functionality into React Router they can help pioneer these massive changes coming to React 19 while focusing on later bringing back Remix better than ever. Some of the things coming in v7 include RSC, server actions, static pre-rendering and enhanced type safety across the board. Solid Start 1.0 is now here. Things from App Router to server enhancements and a lot of other things. You can kind of think of Solid Start being to SolidJS what SvelteKit is to Svelte. I actually plan on making videos on all these, so make sure to subscribe to know when those are out. In other news, there was an article that came out on how even if you have a private S3 bucket, if someone guesses the name of it, they can spam it with unauthorized requests and just running up your bill. The S3 team has since come out saying that they will fix this, but this was actually a big topic of conversation this month. Prisma RM now has early access support for Expo and React Native. Hano 4.3.0 is out which comes with improved support for RPC mode, better compatibility with React, and a lot of other improvements. Clerk introduced Clerk Elements which lets you build your own UI components so it's a lot more flexible. Astro came with two new versions 4.8 and 4.9 which now include experimental support for Astro actions and request rewriting, performance improvements, and a long-awaited container API and a few other improvements. Storybook 8.1 is out with RSC unit testing, story auto generation, and a lot more. Vercel added a Supabase integration, and speaking of Supabase, they now offer branching, which works in a similar way to get branches. You'll be able to test changes in a temporary instance without affecting your production setup. Another big topic of conversation was the partnership between Stack Overflow and OpenAI. Their goal is that they both can improve each other's models, but there was a lot of people that were not happy about this. But that's about it for the month of May. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and...